Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be going over a potential big upcoming potential blizzard for portions of the Ohio Valley and the Tennessee Valleys and then moving through portions of the Great Lakes. This could dump as much as 18 inches of snow, some models are indicating. We're going to start off with the models producing the most snowfall, so that would be the Canadian model. Then we'll look at the European model and what it's showing, which is a little bit less than the Canadian model, but still it would be over a foot for many areas. And then we'll look at the GFS model, which is showing a much weaker system. System that's closer to six inches of snowfall. We're also going to be talking about that cold air that's going to be entering the eastern United States areas and parts of Florida and southern Louisiana as well as southern Mississippi and Alabama will potentially be getting into those freezing temperatures where you're below 32 degrees in some of those regions. So it is going to be a very, very cold early start to December. We're also going to be dealing with extreme winds and potential flooding concerns for the east coast. So we're going to be talking about that. Wind gusts could get as high as 50 or 60 miles per hour if some of these model indications are correct. So we have a lot to get into, so let's get right into it. Here is the current uh, National Weather Service's watches and warnings. We have some wind advisories in effect for portions of the Tennessee Valley as well as scattered throughout portions of the southwest. We have some freeze, wa uh, freeze warnings in effect for portions of California there with uh, some winter weather advisories in effect for portions of Maine, Washington, and Oregon there. And then we have some high wind warnings in effect for portions of southeastern uh, Wyoming there. So... Here is the Canadian model, then we'll look at what the European model is showing, and then we'll look at the GFS model. So we're just going over a couple different models. This is not a forecast just yet. Eventually, if this does stay in the model, which, uh, models, which many of the models have been very, very consistent with this storm, at least being present somewhere, they haven't been consistent on where it's going to be present. Uh, but if this stays in the models, and if, it is, if this stays as a fairly big storm, I will definitely have a snowfall forecast out uh, within the next few days. Now, this is going to be happening uh, early, uh, or late late this week into early next week. So let's play this through. Here would be by tomorrow, or actually this would be Saturday morning, and then as we get to uh, Sunday evening, and then as we're getting to Sunday uh, afternoon and the early afternoon uh, and the late morning, we're looking at that system moving out of Texas and Oklahoma into portions of the southeastern United States, and notice what we have up here. We have a big uh, system. Well, it's not that big of a system, but the effects of the system are going to be big. Look at all this colder in the blue uh, and the, where you have those blue lines that's indicating below 32 degree temperatures and look at that that's going to be headed straight south and east so this system while it's not going to really merge with this system further to the south it is going to move further east and while it's moving east it's going to be dragging this cold air along with it so if this uh, if this blob of moisture can move north and east kind of like this and intersect with that so with some of that cold air you're looking at a fairly big snowstorm uh, so let's play this out here would be by Monday morning. Look at that tail of cold air in those blue contours moving south and east. Now let's continue forward, and this is a, a warmer core system. So the the core of the system, the low pressure center, is going to have warmer than 32 degree temperatures. So it will most likely be rain around the center. But then as you get to the western and northwestern side of that storm and the northern side of that storm, that's where you're going to get into some of that snowfall. So by this point, you're seeing some mixing according to the Canadian model. This is early on Monday, and then this is probably right around 6 a.m. Uh, Central Time on Monday, uh, and then probably this would be right around 5 a.m. Eastern Time. We're looking at heavy snow now showing up for portions of Tennessee, Kentucky, and Ohio, with some moderate snow for portions of Indiana and Michigan there. And then as we continue forward, look at these uh, black lines across your screen. Look at this. We have a 985 uh, millibar low power system right here, and then we have a 1036 high over here, so that's 50 millibar difference a 51 millibar difference that the the atmosphere has to kind of get rid of it It wants to equalize the uh, the atmosphere so it wants to have equal pressures and in order to do that it has to release some winds and the way of it, it releasing its energy is through the form of wind and you are going to see quite a bit of wind you're going to see these winds move moving out of the south so it might actually be quite warm uh, but on the eastern side of the system but on the western side of that system as the winds are coming southward uh, out of the north North going to the south, you will be dealing with some of those colder temperatures. Also, look at that freezing line by this point, and it's getting fairly far to the south by this point. This could be some of the coldest air of the season so far. 
as we continue forward, you start to see that system move into the Ohio Valley. Uh, and you, again, around the system, it is actually going to be quite warm. Around the low pressure, it will be probably above 32. But you get on the western side of there, and you could be dealing with snow. And then look at this. It just continues. It stalls over the Great Lakes and really over Michigan, snowing from about, let's move this, uh, let's move this back. This is Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and it's been snowing for three days now, if this were to be correct. And then look, you get another system moving off of Florida and Georgia, and then it moves north and eastward, collides with that other system, and then potentially brings more rain, more wind, and more snow for portions of the uh, northeast. So this is definitely a chilly pattern. Now here's what the Canadian model shows for snowfall. Anywhere in the blues, that's 1 to 3 inches, 3 to 6 in the purples, 6 to 12 in the uh, pinks, 12 to 24 in the greens and then in those blues or those grays that's where you're 24 to 48 or more inches of snowfall and we see a wide swath of 6 to 12 or even more inches of snowfall look at that that snow is getting fairly far to the south uh even a dusting potentially for portions of the southeast so we'll have to see about that and this is including both of those systems going through december 5th now Here's what the uh, European model is showing for the same uh, storm. Uh, here's by Monday. Here's by uh, Monday early in the morning. Uh, so this would be right around 5 a.m. Eastern time. We're looking at some mixing moving through the western Ohio Valley and into the Great Lakes. And then this system really wraps up, moves up into Ohio, northwestern Pennsylvania, that general region. And by that point, it's dragging in some of that warm air on the east side. But th the same amount of warm air that it's dragging up from the east side, it is going to be dragging up that same amount of cold Cold air on the west side so you will be seeing snow kind of wrapping around all the way almost to the southern side of the system into portions of the southern Appalachians so it is going to be uh, definitely a potentially snowy situation and this has been well modeled within uh, these uh, different computer models now here to be by December 1st, uh, December 1st, Tuesday, and we're looking at that snow still around. Uh, the system by this point would be in portions of Michigan, and the European model is ingesting more of that warmer air on the southeastern side of that. So, unlike what the Canadian model, which was showing snow for these regions, it would be rain if the European model were to be correct. But still, it's still showing that system stalling out over Michigan, and it's still showing more of that snow on the southern and western side of that system. Very, very interesting uh, setup and that just spins around really over the next couple of days. Here's by Wednesday, the second of December, and it kind of fizzles out as we get to later on Wednesday. It's still there by Thursday. You're dealing with some lake effect enhanced snowfall, uh, but look at what you're seeing now over portions of Alabama and Georgia on the uh, bottom part of your screen. By this point, look at that rain starting to pop up. That is your system that's going to head north and eastward, pretty much the same exact track, just a little bit further to the east, and it's going to kind of uh, collide with that colder air mass that's sitting over the Great Lakes, and with that, you might get some snow on the western end, and the Canadian and the European model are actually very similar with this uh, second system, and that actually quite surprises me. You see a big band of heavy and moderate snow move through the Appalachians, and then uh, it really, this is, the, that would be the end of the model run, uh, so we don't know what happens afterward, but you would assume it would continue north and eastward. Here's what the uh, European model is showing, and these are some quite bonkers snowfall totals, where you're looking at maybe close to two feet of snowfall in portions of uh, Ohio, uh, Indiana, Michigan, uh, the UP of Michigan may be getting closer to 30 inches on this model run. This is a very, very interesting setup. Uh, and the, the the colors, by the way, uh, anywhere in the grays, that would be under an inch to two inches, two to six inches in the blue, six to 10 in the purples, and then 10 to about 30 in the pinks. Uh, so we're seeing definitely quite a lot of snowfall if this were to be this, uh, the case. Now we have two out of the three models showing a lot of snowfall on the GFS is that 33% chance that it becomes a much minor, a much more minor system, but still shows snowfall for some of these areas. So let's play this out. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. First, I want to touch on uh, some of the other factors of the storm. Uh, just looking at the European model. Here's the rainfall totals or the precipitation totals. Some of this will be in the form of snowfall. Uh, it's just generalized precipitation. But anywhere in those uh, yellows, that's 1 to 2 inches. 2 to 5 inches in those reds and oranges. And then in the browns, you're looking at 5 to 7 inches. And you see that popping up scattered about through the eastern United States. A general 3 to 5 inches. Uh, 
uh, if this were to be a correct uh, model prediction. Here's, by the way, the temperatures on December 2nd, your low temperatures. Look at that. You're looking at much of the lower 48 under uh, those uh, uh, below 32 degrees. And look at that. It's getting all the way down to Louisiana, northern Florida there. So that's just something that's been really shocking to me how far south this uh, this cold air is getting. And by the way, the, the Canadian model shows that 32 degree line getting into central Florida. Uh, so it would be much further south than what the European model is showing. Uh, and generally 20s and, and teens scattered further to the north. Here's your maximum wind gusts throughout uh, now from now to December 5th. Most of this will come with that uh, first system. You're looking at potentially closer to, uh, this is all in knots, so uh, you do have to add a couple more uh, a couple more miles per hour to this to get the correct conversion from knots to miles per hour, so it would actually be even more in miles per hour, but look at that, your winds potentially gusting to closer to 60 or 70 miles per hour if some of these model predictions are correct. Here's a look at the northeast view if you are wondering, uh, and generally much of the northeast over about 40 knots, which would be closer to 50 miles per hour. Hour. Now let's look at the final model I want to show you. Here is the GFS model, which again is the least snowy model of all of them. We still see that system over the southern plains and that just moves a little bit further to the north. Here's by Monday morning and it's showing some scattered snow as we get to Monday early in the morning, but it really doesn't produce that much with this system, which is something a little bit more uh, interesting. What the GFS actually does is this is your cold system uh, that was up to the north. Now it it keeps this high pressure and actually expands it further to the north. So what ends up happening is that that colder can't really get as far to the south and to the east. So the system is now being pushed further to the south and to the east. So the shield of that rain or that precipitation doesn't get as far north and west to where the cold air is, which is back here. Uh, so it's barely clipping that cold air, and therefore. Uh, much of the same areas are seeing rainfall, but some of those areas that we're seeing snowfall aren't getting any precipitation because the GFS brings this model uh, as far south and east as it does. Now, you start to see maybe some snowfall does develop on that westernmost edge of the storm, uh, and you still do get snow out of this. It's not like you don't, uh, but it's not as much as what some of the other models are promising. Uh, and you see that system really just circulates. It, in, instead of circulating over Michigan by this point, it's actually circulating over portions of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, that general region. So those areas would be in and out of scattered rain. And then further west, you would be dealing with some scattered snow. And then as we continue, it just kind of stays there and just sits there. And really nothing happens through the entire model run except for that system sitting there pumping out more rain, pumping out more snow on the western end of this. And here's what the snowfall totals are from this event. And you see areas actually further uh, closer to the mountainous regions of the Appalachians and then getting into portions of the interior northeast maybe getting a lot of snowfall but it's those areas in the ohio valley that were getting a lot of snowfall and the other model runs that aren't getting as much snowfall you're still getting snowfall if this is to be true a lot of the models show some snowfall for these regions but not to the magnitude that you were seeing before in this model run in uh, for example it's maybe closer to four or five inches in some uh, pockets of uh, of the heavier snow so uh that's just something that we have to keep our eye on and it's definitely something that I'll be tracking on my channel. And definitely, uh, if this does stay in the models, which I think it'll stay uh, in the models at least for the next couple of days. We'll have to see what happens after that. Uh, and it is still a little a little ways out. It's probably around uh, five or six days out from this moving into the Ohio Valley. Uh, so we still have a lot of time to ponder on this and to still look at what's going to actually happen. I'll be issuing updates on this storm periodically uh, throughout the week. Uh, hopefully, you guys have a happy thanksgiving i will have an upload tomorrow uh, most likely early in the morning uh, and then i'll go enjoy my thanksgiving and i hope you guys also do enjoy uh, your thanksgiving uh, and uh, again i just want to wish you guys a happy thanksgiving and please if you do enjoy this uh, type of content please leave a like on the video it helps to get out to more people uh, make sure that you are subscribed and you have your notifications turned on so you don't miss any of my daily uploads and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye